Namco. So it's a lot of, it's like, I feel like this game's biggest flaw is that it's an anime game that's attached to Bandai Namco. That's just the kiss of death for me. All right, so I recently finished Tales of Arise yesterday, like literally yesterday I finished it. Um, so I wanted to just give an update as far as review. Cause when I initially rated, when I initially gave my impressions, I was like, this game is 10 out of 10. I fucking love it, right? Ha 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 ha, feelings changed. Um, Damn. Don't get wrong, I still like the game. I still like the game, but I'm changing my rating from a 10 out of 10 to an eight out of 10. Um, reason being, uh gameplay wise still to this day the best tales of game as far as from a pure gameplay perspective like absolutely amazing heavy emphasis on more action combo combo extensions you name it damage numbers like really good only two things i would say about the combat that i don't like is the enemy variety in that game reminds me of like early ps2 error interview varieties on JRPGs. And if y'all know what I mean by that, I mean, this is a crab monster. And then three dungeons later, this is a purple crab monster who has more HP and more attack power. That's the kind of shit that's in that game. Like the enemy variety is really bad. And the enemy AI is garbage, trash, which surprises me because in earlier tales of games, you were able to like deeply customize your battle, your battle AI, like to the point where you could say, stand there and do nothing. Target the only enemy, target only enemies that I'm targeting. Target, it, target enemies that I'm not targeting. Target the enemy with the highest HP. Target the enemy with the lowest HP. Heal me when my HP gets to 25%. Like you could deeply customize your AI companions in a Tales of game, but they don't have it in this game. Everybody has like a preset AI that the game already gave them, which is really bad because in that game, it emphasizes characters targeting one monster specifically so that you can do your one hit KO move. So I would say that's the only two negatives of the combat. Other than that, everything else is absolutely fantastic. Story-wise, my God, does this story fall apart like in the later towards the end game. Like at first it was like, all right, you know, fuck racism type of situation. And then it just became like, it became like the stereotypical, oh, let's all hold hands. They weren't really bad guys. They, I mean, they enslaved us for 300 years, but guys, we got to move on. We got to embrace each other. And it's like, nigga, they treated you like shit for 300 Ooh. years. And this isn't like, this isn't like with us where it was like 400 years then we got the civil rights movement type of shit. This is like fresh off the cusp of the 300 years of slavery type of situation. And they're like, well, yeah, let's just move past it, guys. We're all friends. Let's smile and stuff. Like typical anime shit. So like it really fell apart. And the villain, what makes a great JRPG is the villain. And this game's villain was fucking ass. Non-existent. Basically, <laughs> basically towards the end of the game, out of nowhere, the game was like, Oh yeah, this is the this is the real enemy, big ass monster. So it was that's pretty much surprise. it. Surprise. I hate surprise main boss. And it was like, yeah, this this is the true final. Vi you know what's funny? It reminded me of a Studio Trigger plot. I can't honor it. No. It was a, it was a it was a Studio Trigger plot line where basically the guys that we were fighting before were actually protecting us against the true enemy, which was like some alien race niggas who was manipulating things from the shadows. That's literally it. That's the story of Tales of Arise. And it fell apart at the end. Even the ending wasn't satisfying. Like it was kind of like a love story. So the two main characters at the end got married, but like, I, I'm glad, but like, I didn't get no resolution on the state of the world after we saved it. It was just like, oh yeah, they got married. Now you can do post game stuff. Okay. Thanks, I guess. I, I, it was it was bottom bottom of the like it wasn't bad, but it was not like as far as like memorable JRPG stories. This one ain't touching a top fifty list for me. Oh, um, yeah. so that was that. Character wise, again, they're not bad, but there there's nothing to write home about. None of those characters have 
anything special going for them like at all your main character is your typical straightforward hero of justice nigga with the the female character being the soon dead a oh i don't like the main character but then she realizes that she likes the main character um and you have like the side niggas the only one i fuck with was my nigga dohaline because he's literally the only dark skinned person in the entire game which i was shocked like everybody is white as fuck and you got this dark skinned ass nigga with red hair and he's the only dark skinned person in the entire game so that's the only person i really fuck with like i was like yeah shout out to you so so, so pretty much it's, it's aw of rest of, of rpgs right. yeah basically and it, the game was about racism but you only got like one dark skin nigga like come on bro like everybody's white <laughs> <laughs> like, no but the funny thing hey, is is that this is hardcore rpg players g <laughs> the the say, you're not hardcore enough for that fucking game anime is supposed to be an escape from reality oh yeah true 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 but the funny thing is is that the the, the black dude was like on the back like he was like part of the group of people that was oppressing people type of situation um but again he wasn't the true he wasn't the enemy it was the people hiding in the shadows right um so this game has skits and for anybody who's played a tales of games who knows what the skits are is basically like these one minute clips like one minute like little animated cutscenes about like things that happen throughout the journey like it's it's super quick it's usually like a setup for a joke and then it's a punchline at the end or it's something to do with like the story like if something happens you can kind of view a skit of what the characters think about the story this game's skits are the worst thing ever i don't know how far you got into the game detro when you played it i'm talking about you watch a cutscene. i you get done watching like a 10 minute cutscene, a huge story exposition right all of a sudden you get in order to activate the skits, you get you have to press R1, right? I get three skits in a row that are like two, two to three minutes. And the, th- and the thing is, it adds no- it's literally like, okay, we just talked about this thing that's a danger, right? And then the very next, the very first thing that comes out is like, hey guys, remember what we just talked about like two seconds ago? Let's talk about it again. Like, it'll be like, Say for instance, it'll be something like the the main character has a sword called the Blazing Sword, right? That every time he wields it, it hurts him, right? So you have a cutscene that's like, hey, every time you touch that Blazing Sword, it hurts you. You'll have a skit later on that goes like, the you'll have a skit that goes like, so I played this shit. So you mean my bad? So you mean to tell me that? The blazing sword hurts me every time I touch it, and that'll be the that's literally the skit. Now you go ahead, Detroit. What was you gonna say? You just gonna say something, Detroit? Yeah, my bad. Uh, I'm lagging too, so that's why I was jumping over. But um, or the bitch to tell you, oh, uh, I can't open up because of my thorns. No, my thorns, thorns. I got these thorns that keep thorns. <laughs> I, I say, <laughs> so you're th- so every time I touch you, I have thorns. <laughs> it's so bad. It's it's it's. I I, bro, I pressed R one so many times accidentally, bro. Oh like so many fucking times, bro. It was bad. Bro. It's bad. <laughs> it's like it's like. I'm saying, oh my god, that's another thing. These niggas won't stop fucking talking, dog. The amount of times. You go into a fucking battle and the main the female character, she's a healer and she heals the main character and he'll go like, why did you just heal me to save you? Of course. Oh, thanks. Two seconds later. Why did you just heal me to save you? Of course. Oh, thanks. Why did you just heal me to save you? Of course. Oh, thanks, bro. This okay. So later on in the game, you unlock this chick named Kisara. So one of her quirks is that she's big on saving god forbid you go and buy revival potions and shit like that as soon as you exit out the shop menu she'll go like i know we have to prepare for our journey and all but did we really have to spend that much every single time you go shopping and you're like okay i gotta restock on life bottles i gotta restock on healing items i gotta restock on this you'll exit the menu and she'll go like I know we are, I know we're preparing for a journey and all, but do we really have to spend that much? I'm like, bitch, shut up. Like there is so many repetitive dialogue in this game that it is very 
very annoying. So if you're somebody who does not like that stuff, I'm telling you right now, you might not like that with this game because it's damn near every second you're gonna, every time you enter into a battle, at first is at first you're gonna be, it's kind of like Persona, where like, it was kind of cute at the beginning, but there's only so many times I can I can hear Mona say, oh, Skull, you're so pathetic. I, there's only there's only so many times I can hear that shit before I go like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's, that's a fucking fact. Bruh, it's so annoying. <laughs> so, um, all that to say, I still enjoyed the game for the pure gameplay um and the world as well the graphics are amazing the lighting's good the world i would say the world building is good it's just that the plot doesn't the plot doesn't enhance the world building and that's where it falls flat so all in all i would give this game an 8 out of 10 i still recommend you play it if you are a tales of fan if you are a jrpg fan but just know as far as like if anybody overrates this game bro just just point them in my direction so i can talk to them and say hey bro get off this game's dick is not that it's it's a good game but like if we're comparing it to like how when persona 5 came out and people were like holy shit this game is like absolutely amazing and it is still to this day it's not touching that ground like this game is above average but it doesn't touch that oh man this is like top 10 top 20 type nah it's like this is like top 25 at best on my list so that's uh that's my yeah. kind of review hey, oh go ahead I was gonna say like I don't know, man. Cause Scarlet Nexus was a, a pack of like mediocre. Oh man, yeah. So I need to, I need to. What JRPG about to restore the feeling, bro? Shimmy got me ten say five. <laughs> Shimmy got me ten say five. Like, cause bro, like <laughs> I, I try to go back to Scarlet Nexus. And I'm like, bro, you talking about ass made character? I'm sorry, G. You talking about an ass made character, bro? Nexus, folks. The most bland piece of paper <laughs> ever, dog. <laughs> like that's that's pretty much it. It's just bland. The game is the game has moments where it's above average, but most of the time it's a bland journey with the bumps being the gameplay. That's how I would describe Tales of Arise. Um so I would still recommend you get it if you are into like action RPGs, if you are a fan of the Tales of series, if you need something to play for this month or whatever if you just need something to tough to play be warned oh yeah also fuck you bandai namco for putting out that um sword out online dlc bruh you you're charging 16 dollars or 17 dollars plus tax because fuck illinois gaming tax you're charging us damn near 16 dollars for me to get a whack-ass kirito costume a whack ass Asuna costume and a whack ass P NPC costume from the anime, and then one boss fight against Kirito and Asuna. That's sixteen dollars. That's seventeen dollars. Fuck out of here, bro. Like I, I didn't, I didn't buy it. But like I looked at, I looked at one dude who's like who plays Jar Omega Evolution. Shout out to Omega Evolution. Um, he had put out a video and he was like don't buy this dlc it's not worth it and then it was, i read an article that was like yeah don't buy this dlc it's not worth it so i'm on your head top on that band dynamico so it's a lot of it's like i feel like this game's biggest flaw is that it's an anime game that's attached to band dynamico that's just the kiss of death for me so um that's it for tales of arise yeah, i'm too sick uh, i'm too sick uh, i'm too sick uh, i'm going sick uh, I'm too sick. Uh -huh.